It's something that we kind of saw happening uh, for the past couple months now, and that's the Detroit Pistons have officially dismissed coach uh, Monty Williams, um, who leaves with five years and $65 million plus left on his deal. Um, obviously, we did a, a video a couple weeks ago on Trajan Langdon coming in as the new president of basketball operations. That led to the parting of ways with Troy Weaver, the general manager, who just did a very piss poor job in the offseason that we thought was decent and turned out to be a 28 game losing streak and a 14 win season. The Boston Celtics actually won more playoff games than the Pistons and Wizards had regular season wins. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, we saw Monty coach Phoenix for many years. Um, was the only coach for Book and for Mikhail Bridges and, and Cam Johnson and those guys. Got to the finals, really did nothing after that. Uh, just got obliterated at home twice by the Mavs and the Nuggets. Um, and now this season. So um, very interesting as far as that goes. We saw a tweet from Woj a couple weeks ago that the Pistons were starting to evaluate Monty Williams' job. Um, and four days ago, they brought in an assistant coach, but apparently it wasn't for Monty then. But um, we'll go to you first, Antoine. Your thoughts on the firing? Oh, um, I feel like this is, I don't know, this is definitely not like a Darvin Ham vocal situation where he's a scapegoat because Detroit did not have any promise this year. I'm guessing this is more of Langdon coming in and just wants a full reset and just Seems wants his guys. Um, who did they bring in for an assistant coach? I forgot his name. It was like a, it was like a long like European esque name. I'll put that's, the name on the screen right that's now really for his name. I'm he, guessing there's some kind of connection there with that new coaching candidate they want to bring in, whoever it is. Right. We don't know. <laughs> who uh, that there is. has to be some connection there. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so hard. I mean, Monty is a respected coach by a lot of people, and I think he'll get a job somewhere. I don't know head coaching wise who else is available. Um, probably assistant, I would think. It's is either the, it's is either the main. It's either Cleveland or an assistant. I, I would. Think I think I would love to bring him on as an assistant with the Nets. Yeah. With Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson there. Yeah. I think it's a good fit. Um, I'd love to see who takes Detroit's job. Um, if it's someone we know, if it's someone that's another outside the box hire, um, I think Borrego is kind of set with Cleveland. I think Cleveland likes him a lot. That's what I've been seeing a lot on Twitter. Just Borrego's everywhere yeah. with Cleveland. Reddick's with LA, of course. I don't know who else is left after Detroit, of course. Um, but yeah, they're gonna owe him. I guess they're. Def I guess Landon's financially fine with paying him for the next five years. Well, they um, they did him a favor with all of that. For those that don't yeah. know, Monty Williams has dealt with a lot in his personal life. In his personal life, I know his wife uh, passed from cancer, and I think his either his mother or his current uh, wife or girlfriend has cancer as well. Okay. So basically, when they gave him the job. They paid him a lot of money, and they were able to let him travel wherever he needed to go. They were going to pay for all of his travel if he ever needed to go back home. Mm. So, okay, yeah, right from the start, there was that respect level with the Pistons and Monty Williams. And that why, that's why I was always supportive of the contract, because not everyone understood the context of the contract. So. Yeah. And yeah, and obviously he doesn't. You know, he's just he's gonna be making sixty five million dollars just sitting at home. Or if he winds up taking, let's say he gets the Nets assistant coach job, wow. he's gonna be getting paid by two franchises that's at once. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that, that's like same thing with Vogel and Ham. Like Ham is on Milwaukee staff now. He's like getting two contracts. Yeah. We're, Vogel, we just Vogel. finished paying Steve Nash, and we still have to pay Jock Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. So that's the that's problem with firings with long contracts you yeah. gotta pay off that contract you gotta until have, it's you gone. Have to. yeah it's one of those you bite the bullet you take your medicine and you just swallow that pill yeah that. what is the smallest contract that a coach has signed a smallest contract uh, i guess an interim just taking over as the head coach for the rest of the season like brian keith this year now he got the full so like job. one year well even like a say like when jock vaughn got hired before he got his main extension he got an extension till the end of the uh, till the uh, end of the regular season from last year mm -hmm. so um i guess that's technically but i don't think you can sign a one-year coaching deal i've never seen that i no. think i think anywhere from two two to three is probably my guesstimation yeah. with that mm -hmm. so yeah. okay. i know monty's was about five or yeah, six years that's a yeah. lot it's a lot yeah typically yeah. like an, ex an expensive coaching hire is essentially making like what i think the highest paid is making like 18 a year which is uh, like a which is like a low end role or like a low end starter high end yeah. role player kind of mm, around yeah. those lines. 
Yeah. So they're never going to make that much money. You have to be the best of the best mm-hmm. in order to get that kind of money. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. the highest pay right now is Steve Kerr. He gets yes. 18 mil a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I think I Ty think- Lue is second or third um, behind... Uh, I don't know what the other one is. Yeah. But you were saying, Joe? No, I was going to say, I think you said something interesting when you said, who was the, the coach or the, the owner that got rid of? Trajan Langdon. Trajan Langdon. Mm-hmm. You said that he might have a connection with someone else with the ass- and want to bring the ass- him with in. With the assistant they hired before they fired. Um, Monty Williams. Monty Williams. So do you think they fired Monty Williams because they want to bring in someone that they are f- more familiar with? Like... Someone that the assistant coach probably gave him a name that they liked. I don't think so. Went with, I don't Why know. do you think? Because I think, I think it, they were in a really tough spot. I think they wanted to keep Monty. But I think if you look at last season that they were trying to make the play in, and they wound up having one of the most historic losing streaks in sports history, the, everything aligned completely wrong. I mean, that could have went wrong did. When you had Cage just looking just like totally lifeless out there, and winning only 14 games of basketball, somehow doing worse than you did when you were intentionally trying to tank. I think that yeah. at that point, you, you cross a line where you just can't continue. Hmm. Let, I think they had to dismiss him for that reason wow. alone. Let's also not forget, their team is not bad. They have two point guards. Well, Jay and I was playing a shooting guard that are could be elite players. They have a young center in Duran. They have a sore Thompson. Their core four um, is there. Like they, they have better directions than you teams know, better than them right if, now. If Killian Hayes worked out too, <laughs> that would have been another great point guard that they drafted high, but he didn't. But they don't have a. They're not a Wizards type of team. They have young players who are going to be great, <laughs> but yeah. they need to start performing and being well. Like Ivy didn't look good last year at all from the first year. Cade, the same thing. Duran improved tremendously. I think a sore. He's a different type of player. He's all over the court, stealing, blocking, passing, rebounding, scoring probably like 10 points a game. But he's putting up the box score numbers that, you know, you see. Um, I hope they don't get Tobias Harris. <laughs> That's the one thing I hope they don't do. That's not the right player for a veteran to bring in. Right. Um, well, they need vets. I don't think Tobias is the right answer for that, though. I well, think he might be. I think he might. He, he has history with the Pistons. <laughs> I don't think it's yeah. a bad option. Oh. What would, you, would you rather them sign Tobias Harris or trade for Zach Levine? Well, then you get Ivy to the bench. You don't want that. Right, but I'd rather go for the ladder with Tobias Harris. So, yeah. It makes sense. So you, you probably think Tobias fills in that power forward or small Oh, yeah. Well, they role. need it because you're either, you're either just playing Duran out there and having Asar play the four, or you're essentially having two bigs out there, which we saw all season didn't work. Yeah. So I Tobias, mean, Harris, Tobias Harris is one of like the only like two or I, three true I want to see I want to see Simone Fontecchio minutes. <laughs> with some three pointers, and then of course, because he's a great player, and he's he's not he's great for them off the bench. Um, they got rid of Bojan and Burks, of course. They got rid of all their dead weight. They do have Quentin Grimes that we sent them over. Maybe they can do something with him. I have no idea. Um, they have they have lots of flexibility as far as and they have the fifth pick. They're gonna draft another young they guy. Do yeah. they're gonna draft another guy who's gonna be probably I could see Buzelis. That's who they're projected to that, get. That's a forward that could fill in unless, beautifully for them. Unless one of the one of the top five teams is looking to trade their pick. I mm. know San Antonio yeah. is looking to, to to get rid of number four. Maybe they swap. They're definitely not getting a guard. There. It's going to be a forward. Um, it has yeah, to be. Buzelis. He's He's the perfect fit, I think, based on who they're going to get, who's still on the board. I think he's, he's a high-risk, high-reward because those G yeah. League Knight guys are not necessarily it. I think Kaminga's probably turned out the best. Maybe Jalen Green too. Jalen yeah. Green. But I think as far as you know, expectations go, G League Ignite has fallen very, very short. Mm-hmm. But with with this, yeah, I don't know who they're gonna hire. To be honest with you, I have no there's, idea. There's a lot of open options, but I think I think this is the perfect opportunity to go for a guy looking to make a statement, put his name out there as a good head coach in the NBA. I think you go after one of those assistants. You call up Philadelphia and get an interview for Sam Cassell. I think that would work out beautifully. I, I think. Agree. This could be a Kenny Atkinson job. Yes. This could be a beautiful Kenny This could job. be a Kenny Atkinson job. He's been getting interviews. He's at Golden State's. He's Golden State's He's assistant. He's Golden State's assistant. I think this is a Kenny Atkinson job. This, was, this reminds me very similarly to when he took over Brooklyn, except you already, have, you already have the guys there, right? We were just relying on guys who picked up off the scrap heap. He already has promise. There's a promising young core in, in Detroit. And they have picks. 
So I think you already got a head start on his Brooklyn tenure. It's just a matter of how good are they going to play. And I think this year is kind of the last chance really for them. They're going to give Cade the Supermax or the, or the rookie extension, whatever it is. So he's going to be locked in under contract. And you got to put NBA players around him. You can't be having these these just mid-offs just around him. Like, you can't be playing Killian Hayes for 30 minutes a game. Like, you can't have those type of games. I will also say when Detroit is good, the NBA world is also very happy. I think it's the same thing. Detroit is a basketball city, not only because of their championships, but the Motor City is, they love their teams. Yeah. Um, Detroit, I felt like, has been just on that negative side of the the Mm -hmm. line for a long time they got to get back i would love to see him back in the playoffs imagine that arena in the playoff time they love their basketball team i mean you know they've had dealt with the lions now the lions are back to being good and they've been showing out like crazy for them just going through the motion um (laughs) but yeah i mean i think when the pistons are good the nba's happy yeah i agree yeah Man of very few words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I would. Would they one of the first founding franchises? Um, I'm too tired to even. I don't remember. even know. I don't think so. All no. I know is that they were they were the only competition to Jordan in the '90s. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Early '90s. Early '90s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring back the days with Joe and Isaiah. They have two yeah. point guards. What if What if they flip the script and bring in Isaiah Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that easy to bring in no. legends like nah, that. No, you can't. Um, you the the Pistons have they've they've played with fire a little too long, everything's blown up in their face. They really need to lock in this year, and they at least have to win more than twenty games. They have yeah. to just be competitive in games. Try and make even if you finish as the eleven seed or a twelve seed, that's a W, because we all know if you have a stinker again, you're not getting the first pick. You're gonna fall back to five again. <laughs> and it's gonna be the same <laughs> year every single time. Yikes! And that's what and that's what, that's just brutal for. I think Detroit. I think this year I'm expecting two jumps from piss poor teams, and that's the Spurs and the Pistons. Right. I the, think Spur- the Spurs tanked last those year. Those two need to have a jump this year. I think the Wizards are not going to jump as high. Hmm. I think Pistons yeah. and Spurs got to jump up to bottom playing. So what's your ceiling for what seed and uh, end result do you see for Detroit? They need to be at least within 500. Well, not what they need. What do you think? Oh, I think they're gonna make the last playing team. Ten seed. Ten seed. They're gonna be at least five hundred or a little below five. They can't be twenty wins. Okay. I know you predicted the Wizards to get the ten seed. Mm-hmm. So where do you where do you see the Pistons falling? Their ceiling is nine. Ooh. Okay. That's yeah. Bottom of the plan. Yeah. Their ceiling is nine. I'm gonna go a little bit more optimistic. I think their ceiling is eight. I think they're gonna fall short of that ceiling. Yeah. But I think they're I think they're probably gonna miss the play in again. I think they're probably gonna finish around eleven, twelve. Yeah. But probably win maybe twenty eight games. Mm-hmm. Which is that's double last year. <laughs> if they can get off to a good start, like they could probably meet their win total before the year's over. I'm expecting a lot more than twenty eight from the Spurs this year. The Spur well, the Spurs intentionally were losing games this year. Do you really think he was forcing Jeremy Sohan point guard minutes at the start? Right. Well, we know Pop's not that bad. <laughs> Like we know, I think San Antonio doesn't. They're going to strategically kind oh, of yeah. place their way into things. They're not going to make the play in next year. Yeah. They're probably going to finish around 12, 11, 12, and they'll probably wind up getting another, you know, legal top five pick in the lottery. And I think the year after, you'll start to see them in the play in and in the playoffs and everything like that. And we're going to see what Rem, what what uh, 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 what Wemby's really made of, mm-hmm. essentially. But 